to get here? Once again, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the podcast, How Did I Get Here? And for a quick explanation for those of you who have not tuned in with us before, it's where we live our best lives on the internet, come out the other side, knowing more, but not really knowing more at all. Now, you're probably contemplating what in the world could this mean? And for those of you who have stuck with us through this long passage of time and many explorations, you're probably sick of this answer, but we have no idea. Welcome, enjoy us, and join us on this quest for everlasting knowledge on topics that probably will not aid you in your average life, but will be a huge flex for your friends that are during your next social occasion. Um, my name is Jay. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, check out youtube.com slash diapods for full episodes. <laughs> Going to the topic of today. Today's topic is, what is the bandwagon effect? Miami Heat fans. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Butler is a bust, they said. Oh, Jimmy Butler this, Jimmy Butler that. Look at his stats. He cannot carry them to a win. And what happened at the end of the season when the Lakers were up against the Miami Heat? Everyone jumped on the underdog story. The bandwagon effect. Are you a bandwagoner? Are you a bandwagoner? Am I a bandwagoner? Let's hop into it. The bandwagon effect refers to our habit of adopting certain behaviors or beliefs because many other people do the same. It's a type of cognitive bias, right? Um, it can affect all sorts of decisions we make in our lives. The primary worry is that it can override the individual critical thinking that often goes into making valid and good <laughs> personal decisions. Please, for the love of God, I I cannot emphasize this enough. The bandwagon effect, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a negative thing, but I would say to know when these decisions are just, you know, for fun, like sports or for entertainment purposes. But when these bandwagon effect, actual opinions, bandwagon affected opinions uh, start to stray in to your professional life, into your career choices, Please, for the love of God, do your own critical thinking. Make your own choices. Now, that does not mean that other people's opinions can't be valid to you. That does not mean that you could hear someone make a good valid point and be swayed by them and be like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Maybe I'll switch over. That's not bandwagoning. Bandwagoning is when you just take an idea or when all your friends tweet, Jimmy Butler in Miami Heats, and then you just <laughs> hop on it without ever seeing an NBA game and say, Jimmy Butler in Miami Heats to farm tweets and to farm likes. And that is my point. Okay. That was great. Yeah. Uh, can you think of a time when you yourself succumbed to the bandwagon effect? I definitely think that when I was younger, uh, I felt like there was more of a need to be socially accepted than I do now. I mean, I never understood social cues. So the easiest thing for me to do to be accepted by my peers, especially in middle school or high school, when I had a harder time with social cues, was to bandwagon. I had no idea what they were talking. I remember one time I embarrassed myself. And um, I, had seen on, I had seen the other day, Someone talking on social media saying, oh, Dwayne Wade wasn't good until LeBron joined the Miami Heat. And then I, at that point, I had no idea what basketball was. And the only knowledge I had was NBA 2K. And all I knew was Ray Allen was really good at chucking up glitch threes. And that's how I'd win games. Um, so I went into this room. They were talking about the Miami Heat. And I brought up the point because I bandwagoned and I just, I, I made an assumption. And I had already begun to develop this cognitive idea that, oh yeah, Dwayne Wade was only good because he was in, because he was with LeBron. And I said it. And I was like, uh, yeah, wait, wasn't Dwayne Wade only good because, or isn't he only good because LeBron's there? And everyone was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, what the actual hell are you talking about? And then that's when I learned to not be an idiot and form my own decisions. Wow. There you go. I think another point in this article that really uh, further emphasizes my ideals is that a lack of individual critical thinking can particularly have a damaging implication when it's widespread. Social and political movements are often fueled by the bandwagon effect. You, you just gave the look like the office, like Jim to the office to the camera. <laughs> Actually, I have been known as Jim of the office in day six. Moving on, the bandwagon effect. 
I'm actually kind of curious. The origin of the phrase comes from the use of a bandwagon, which is a float in a parade. Parade that encourages, encourages people to jump aboard and enjoy the music that is being played. Is, is that what happens in parades? People just join in and jump on the float from the audience and, da- and dance? I know some people have done stuff like that. Don't you get escorted out by the police if you do that? Well, it depends on your vibe. <laughs> depends on everyone's vibe. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Okay, wait, okay. <laughs> wait, 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 what? Okay. Over time, it has come to be understood as a form of manipulation to influence people to join with a trend in politics or consumer behavior. The implication is that since so many other people are doing it, it must be good or at least acceptable. Ah, that's where the big no comes in, I think. I think there have been numerous times in history where a large general population of people have had a certain stigma or a belief of something and it turned out mm, a couple years later or maybe even a hundred years later, a couple decades later that they were absolutely wrong. The earth is round. It's not flat. What do you mean? Remember, that's what, um, what's his face? Copernicus? <laughs> Galileo? Was Galileo. Oops. <laughs> Remember, Galileo. Galileo was the one who was yes. like, guess what? The earth is a sphere. And they were like, what do you mean? But Kyrie said it's flat, flat, so it's flat. No, 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 no. You can't bandwagon. <laughs> no, Kyrie said it's you, flat. We've already been told that you have a history of bandwagoning no, this is on the, the wrong wagon. This anti-bandwagon. No, no, no. This is a bandwagon. This is the anti-bandwagon And Kyrie's right now. pulling the wagon. <laughs> and you jumped onto it. And when I'm not letting you. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who think I'm actually serious when I talk about the flat earth theory. <laughs> like, uh, I just want to make it very clear that I'm being sarcastic. This is sarcasm. There you go. Yes. I do not believe in the flat earth theory. And I believe that the earth is round and I completely 100% agree with Galilee. I thought you were going to be like, I believe the earth is a pyramid. I think <laughs> you're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the bandwagon effect <laughs> has wider implications. That would have been the smarter answer. That would have been a clip and a half. There you go. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. The bandwagon effect has a wider implications, has a wider implication outside of politics and buying behaviors and social psychology. This tendency of people to align their belief and behavior with those groups with those of a group is also called herd mentality or groupthink. I think groupthink is something that's very apparent in our current world. People like to play safe. You know what I mean? People like to uh, lean along the lines. That's that's it. Oh, that's it. That's it. Bandwagoning. I mean, you know, sometimes, as you said in high school, you felt pressured to bandwagon or like to join in on things or conversations that you as an individual wouldn't naturally want to be a part of. Yeah, and it, it sucks because when you don't understand social cues, like it's it's like, uh, dude, you know what I thought was like the most genius line in one of Jody's songs? I have no, it goes, I don't have no social cues. Dude, that, that was a genius line. What song was it? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't get over you. Can't get over you. Yeah. That was a genius line. Uh-huh. But um, basically, when you don't have social cues and when you don't understand things, it's really hard to join in a conversation because it's hard to tell what angle people are coming from. So if you bandwagon and just agree with them, usually 90% of the time you're right. 10% of the time, they're being sarcastic and you're wrong. Yeah. But 90% of the time, it's a good percentage. I take 90 over 10 any day. Yeah. If someone told me that my stocks could increase at a 9 to 1 ratio, I would, I would take the 9. <laughs> I would risk my stocks <laughs> at a 9. <laughs> That's a good ratio. You can't. <laughs> and now that we are done with the meetup today, we're going to move into the first question. And the question comes from Omar Fix. Which country do you wish to live in for the rest of your life and why? Um, currently, this is a question that has been thought of a lot. And I have been thinking perhaps Canada or Hawaii. The fact that you think Hawaii is a country. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> locations. I was thinking locations. Yeah, sorry. city. Like a city. Yeah, Hawaii is a part of the United States. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking like location. And you know, Vancouver, Toronto, they all look very nice. And Hawaii is also looking like a very nice spot to just spend the rest of your life. And um, I mean, I'm sure there's more dynamics to what I see on a third person perspective from my perspective of Hawaii. Mm-hmm. But it just feels like a very nice place and a chill place to just Settle for the rest of your life and, you know, mm-hmm. enjoy, the, enjoy the sun. You're thinking in terms of like retirement life. I'm thinking, enti- yeah, I'm thinking retirement. Yeah, not the hustle life. I mean, if you're going to be hustling, 100% you should be in LA, you should be in New York, you should be in Seoul, you should be in uh, Berlin, you should be in, you should be in all the capitals. Berlin is the capital of Germany, right? Yeah. Okay. I just, yeah. Is it? In Moscow. It must, yeah, yeah. Mos- yeah Moscow is yeah, the Berlin, capital of right? Russia. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's the capital of Portugal? Oh, L- Lisbon. Lisbon. How did I know that? How did you know that? I be knowing things. <laughs> I only know that because I went on tour there. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never been there. Okay. But, well, um, that's beautiful. Yeah. Next question. If you were a time traveler, where, when would you go and why? Definitely, I would go 20 years ago and I would re-release all the songs that were on the Billboard charts. Top 10 that I remember. And I'd be a multi-millionaire. I, I think I'd be a billionaire actually. Yeah, but a lot of songs have to be released at the right time. No. Under the right context. No, 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 no. no. You know? I'm going to release all those songs. Yeah. Not as me. I'm going to be a songwriter. Oh. And I'm going to wait. I'm just going to write all these songs. And then as soon as that person has their blow-up song, I'm going to send it to them. I'm going to be like, this is your next hit. Send it to them. This is your next. Eventually, it's going to catch on to the point yeah. where I am a hit maker, right? Or someone's just going to tackle you in the lobby of a Capitol Records because this random Korean man ran in waving like a USB in the air. Guys. <laughs> so, well, then you would invest into like Apple stock and like Pixar stock. Probably Apple stock. Yeah. I don't know much about Pixar stock. Good. It's good. <laughs> uh, I would probably do it if you could go 30 years into the past. If you can go to Steve, when, when was Apple created? Apple was… 90s? was like 90s? Because then Steve Jobs… So Pixar was a failing company. 1976. Yeah. Because Steve Jobs… Uh, he got fired from Apple. And he met animators that would eventually become what was Pixar. And these animators were working for a company that went bankrupt. Interesting. And he like bought it. And was like, no, I really think what you guys are doing is cool. And I want to develop it. Interesting. And then that's how Pixar happened. So yeah, I would probably get invested into Steve Jobs' life. <laughs> just him. Just and be just, like… And 50-50 all in <laughs> into him. And be like, yo, you're, you're the man. He is the I man. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Give him all my money. Go meet Disney. Actual Walt Disney. You know? Get yeah. the original like first Mickey Mouse cell. Yeah. You know, animation cell from him. Isn't that from like the 1920s? 30s maybe? Dude, okay. Walt Disney. When was Walt Disney around like working? 30s? 40s? Is that too early? <laughs> Am I, is that a stretch? <laughs> he was born in 1901. So I would oh, say wow. yeah, 20s, 20s, 30s. Yeah. If there was like… Yeah. There's just one brand that you would have invested all your money into. What would it be? Would it be Disney? Would it be Microsoft? Would it be… Did you know uh-huh. that his spouse and him had 24 years apart? In age? Yeah. Oh, well that sounds like their business. <laughs> and they… Oh, just kidding. Oh, I thought I thought they died. Or they passed away on the same day. Because it said the same day. But I'm, I guess I'm, I might be tripping. Oh. Well, there you go. Did it. Okay. Alright, anyway. Uh, that is it for the second question. And that wraps up our segment for today. Make sure to send your questions to hashtag HDIGH. And let us know what our next big adventure should be on. Um, you can send us these questions at our socials. At Instagram and Twitter. At The Dive Studios. Find full episodes on YouTube.com slash Dive Pods. A few days after the audio posting. Also we have a TikTok. So make sure to visit us on that. And click the follow. At The Dive Studios. Also, and this is a new announcement, but if you have questions for us and our upcoming guests, you can also text us your questions or subjects at our official number at plus one three one zero five six four one zero three zero, and this is for U.S. and Canada only. Once again, the number is plus one three one zero five six four one zero three zero. Don't forget to subscribe and to review this podcast, and we will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy that episode? If you did, you can always listen to the full episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And also, do not forget to subscribe and follow this channel. Also, turn on notifications. 